Hello everyone, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Adobe has just released its CC 2015 update. And one of the major updates is the integration of their service called Adobe Stock. Now Adobe Stock is basically a way to purchase stock photography, illustrations and vector graphics, and it's integrated directly within Photoshop. So let's switch over to the desktop and I'll show you exactly how to use the service. All right, so let's go here to file new in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. And this time I'm just going to use just a random arbitrary size for a banner. I'll say maybe 600 by 250 and we'll hit OK. And here's our artboard and we'll go ahead and just uh, we'll leave it at artboard. No, no need to really change that. So what we'll do is I uh, let's say, for example, we're just creating, creating an advertisement or something like that. Um, and we want to have a picture of a car or something like that in the background. And we're just going to have maybe just a little bit of text and that's it. So a very minimal, kind of like a billboard. Uh, so traditionally what you would do, you would go on the web, maybe images.google and you would filter by free to use or any other number of sites like that. Well, what this new version of 2015 allows you to do is we can click right over here and if we click on this little logo for the Creative Cloud logo we can I uh, see it says need content search millions of photos at Adobe stock you can also access the same place that this takes you once you click it over here file search Adobe stock so if we click on it it will launch the browser and there we go A very simple interface to search with and so let's say for example we want no illustrations or vectors. We just want photographs. And we type car. OK, so we can go through any number of these. And once we come to a picture that we think will work well for our composition, we can go ahead and let's say we'll use this one right here. Eh, maybe, maybe this one. Yeah, we'll use this one. And all we have to do is if we want to preview it, all we have to do is specify save preview. Now, this is a library that I already created. Now, if you click this button, if you have no libraries existing, obviously you have to create a new one. So you specify the name here and then you can create it. So mine is test library. And so all I have to do is click uh, save preview to test library. And now it says saved. So now we can go back to Photoshop and if I click on test library, we could see we have the speed car right here. So now if I want to actually use this, I can just left click and drag it. And we'll go ahead and scale this up a bit. Maybe right around there. Select move tool, hit place. Make sure this stays in our artboard. Now you could see it does have a watermark because this is just a preview. It's meant for you being able to test out whether or not this particular image is going to work. So obviously if this was a real advertisement or something, you wouldn't want this right here. So what we would do is if we go back here or go to file, search Adobe stock rather, Or we click on libraries and say, let's say, for example, we liked that one. We can go ahead and click buy license and save to test library. Now, if we do that, if you don't currently have a subscription to Adobe stock, this is what you're going to present, be presented with. So a single image is simply $9.99 with Adobe stock. Uh, you also have subscription plans for 10 images a month, which would be $30, which is quite a difference because if you were to buy 10 of these, it would be $100. And then there's a second one, or a third one rather, 10 images a month, uh, which would be $50, but additional images are only half the price and roll over up to 120 images. And then the last option, 750 images at $200 a month, 
which kind of seemed, I don't know, a little strange to me to take the, the jump from 10 images to 750. But anyhow, that's basically how Adobe Stock works. Now, I need to basically say something that I think is really important here. Um, Adobe Stock, there are definitely cheaper alternatives out there, and there's actually free alternatives as well. Now, of course, if they have a great image uh, and you're working on a project that you really care about, and they have it, $10 is not very much. I would definitely purchase it. But you should definitely be aware of all the other resource sites that exist out there. Um, so for example, I, I do courses for the Envato Network and they have photodune.com and these images are quite a bit cheaper. So let's type in car for example. I'm waiting for this to load. All right, and let's say we like this picture right here. Well, they give you some extra options. First of all, you can specify the size. That would be nice if Adobe Stock did that uh, because sometimes you only need a small image. You don't need a large one. Let's say, for example, you're working on the web. You don't need like a large print one. Well, you could be as cheap as $1. So that's one example about that's out there. Now, there's a bunch of other examples, and I'm going to link those in the description of YouTube here so that you can check those out and there's a lot of free resources as well. So hopefully you guys will find use for that. And that is it. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and definitely check out designcourse.com with the premium video courses I have made available along with one-on-one -on -one design training with myself. So check that out. All right, I'll see you next time.